Hello everyone, this is Matthew from the Indiana Jones and the Seven Cities of Gold team and today I'm gonna make a little tutorial, I'm gonna make a series of tutorial about how to succeed in making a proper perspective in your point-and-click scenes. Many think they master the art of perspective and probably they do but when it comes to the realm of point-and-click it's very different so I'm gonna start with some first lesson put huge quotes around the word lesson, okay, uh, I'm not a master in any way, but lesson one is uh, the different types of perspective. Even if you know what kinds of perspective exist, uh, I suggest you pay attention to this because it can change everything afterwards. So let's go. First, which tool? What I like to do is using paint.net. Why? Because it's free because it's simpler than Photoshop and the GIMP for example and it has uh, a lot of control uh, on the kind of lines that you, you draw uh, yeah you can draw straight lines without any anti-aliasing and such so here is my blank image so first thing I would recommend that you choose carefully your canvas size uh, I recommend you choose a canvas size much larger than the, the final image for example for a uh, regular sized image like uh, 320 by 200 uh, I choose 2000 by 2000 why is that? because then uh, when you zoom in the area where you're gonna draw let's say this when you zoom in, so this will be my viewport, okay, so it has the size of the scene 320 by 200 and when you zoom in you can use the scroll bars to move around your scene and why is that important? Because since you're drawing perspectives then you have vanishing points and vanishing lines that can go very far away from the center of your viewport so you need to be able to scroll around far away from the center so I'm creating a few layers to work properly so I'm gonna make a layer for my horizon line there and I'm adding a layer for my vanishing lines that I'm gonna draw in let's say in red I'm making sure that the line is one pixel wide and I'm making sure that there will be no anti-aliasing anti-aliasing I never know how to pronounce it in English so lesson one what kinds of perspectives exist so as you probably know there are mainly uh, three types one point perspective two point perspective and three point perspective so now the common mistake when you're a beginner is to believe that one point perspective will ha will have one vanishing point two point perspective will have two point two vanishing points and three points perspective will have three vanishing points um, that could be correct but that's not the best way to imagine it the correct way to imagine this is how many dimensions are you going to draw flat when you draw a three-point perspective you are going to represent all three dimensions correctly so you will have at least three vanishing points at least when you draw a two-point perspective you're gonna have three minus one correct uh, dimensions and the third one will be flat and when you have a one-point uh, perspective uh, you're gonna have three minus two perspectives draw, drawn properly so one perspective drawn properly one dimension I mean and the two other, the two other dimensions will be flat and finally you have a uh, zero point perspective <laughs> which you, co you call axonometric where all three dimensions three minus three equals zero all three dimensions are flat and none of them is represented properly so what do I mean by flat and what do I mean by properly so let's start with the three point perspective in the three points perspective you have at least one point uh, imagine you want to represent a cube so a cube is made of three dimensions so in a three point perspective you're gonna need one point here here it is for the first dimension so for example if I have my vanishing lines there so that's for the first face so imagine that my face for example was pink in the cube I'm gonna give them colors so that you can uh, see better what I mean so one pink whoops sorry that was a whole classic issue when you draw 2D and you use flood fill 
coloring yes okay so one color for each face so now I have just drawn the pink face so this perspect this dimension is represented properly because it has a vanishing point that's the important thing it has a vanishing point so it is represented second face also has a vanishing point because as I said it would be a three points perspective and each of them each dimension has to be represented accurately so each of them has a vanishing point so second face and I made a mistake is that the third face the third dimension I mean also has a vanishing point so as you can see I drew the lines parallel here but actually there is a vanishing point let's say it's here so the third face also has a vanishing point so this is a three points perspective so let me repeat one more time it's a three points perspective because each dimension has a vanishing point but when I say it has a vanishing point it can have several because if you represent your scene uh, as seen from above for example imagine that this rectangle is your space seen from above okay and you have your cube there so since it's seen from above it's the yellow face okay but now imagine that you have a second cube and it is slightly turned so obviously you need new vanishing lines for this and new vanishing points so three points perspective doesn't mean three vanishing points it means at least three vanishing points so for example the second cube would be drawn like this it is slightly turned and as you can see the perspective is distorted but don't worry about this we'll come to this later when we talk about curved perspective or fisheye perspective but for now we'll just stay to this so I've got this and I've got this and I've got this so as you can see more vanishing points to take in account the angle but still uh, three points perspective okay so now as I said two points perspective means you stop taking in account one of the three dimensions and one of the three dimensions becomes flat and that is what I have draw drawn at the beginning there I decide that some of the lines will now be perfectly parallel so this line is parallel to this one which is parallel to this one which is parallel to this which is parallel to this which is parallel to this sorry to this so suddenly a perspective becomes completely f a d dimension sorry becomes completely flat so I'm just fixing my rector my cube a little bit and there you go okay so boom oops I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because it's hard to aim at the pixels this way All right. So All right. So now you see it's it's enclosed in the bl light blue lines. Same thing for here. This is not enclosed in the light blue lines. 
this ha this is not on the same face anymore and now everything has to be in the light blue lines so I have this face and I have this face all right oops I forgot to fix the top face sorry about this okay so I don't know if you see it but now you have pretty much the same thing as before but two of the dimensions uh, one of the dimensions is now flat and following the the vertical lines but I can continue this way if I continue on to the one point perspective that means two of the dimensions are flat and it's very easy to draw I'm gonna do it I'm gonna start over because it's starting to be very messy so I decide that for example um, this dimension is flat I have one cube here and like in the previous one the vertical dimension is also flat so vertical lines horizontal lines and the only remaining dimension that is represented for real between codes is the third one so one vanishing point and like always it means at least one vanishing point because the other cube is still slightly rotated so I'm gonna rotate the front face but once again with parallel lines so the vertical lines are parallel and the, those lines are parallel as well and for the rest I'm still using my vanishing point there so still parallel okay parallel 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 okay so top face front face and side face so in case it's not clear you have to understand that sorry this line is perfectly parallel to this line which is also perfectly parallel to this line you only have one dimension left that is represented faithfully and finally the last kind of perspective the zero point perspective actually called axonometric perspective is where all the lines are parallel all of them which means that we already have this one with all the lines parallel and I keep making parallel lines and as I said before it still applies to the rotated cube you still use parallel lines so this one is rotated so parallel 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 to this one vertical and parallel okay so now I'm using only sets of parallel lines boom 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 and what is an isometric perspective you're gonna ask it's the kind of perspective that you see in many games it's exactly an axonometric perspective which means zero point perspective except uh, all the dimensions are have equal length so for example if I want to turn this into a isometric perspective it's exactly the same but just uh, sorry I have trouble aiming at my pixels so it's exactly the same except this length should be exactly the same as this length which should be exactly the same as this one okay all the lengths are equal all the dimensions are flattened in an equal way so it's a bit weird sometimes for perspective because as you know when you apply perspective the things seen from the side are sli slightly shorter and in an isometric perspective they all have the same length so they look thicker than they are actually and that's it for lesson one thank you very much